and welcome to another video. My name's Claire and I am the creator here at Crochet with Claire. In today's video we're going to learn how to crochet and also put it onto your hat. I made this hat about two weeks ago and I have had so many compliments when I've worn it out. I've worn it to the shops, I've worn it to my craft group, I've worn it to friends houses and they're all just like, uh, did you? add crochet to your hat oh yeah I sure did so let's get our supplies ready I'll show you what you need in the next part of the video and let's get started on the lesson for our supplies we're going to need a hat some yarn scissors yarn needle and a crochet hook the yarn that I'm using for this project is a DK weight yarn this is an eight ply in Australia or a number three weight yarn in the US for my crochet hook I'm going to be using a three millimeter crochet hook. I'm not sure what this is in the letters, but I'll put it across the screen for you. This is one from my budget crochet hook set. If you're interested in that, there's a link below in the description box. If you want to use a worsted weight yarn, which is a 10 ply or around about an hour in weight in the UK, I would suggest using a four millimeter crochet hook or a G size. So this will work with any weight yarn, but I would suggest using a crochet hook that is two or even three sizes smaller so that we get firm tension and a crochet doesn't give. We're going to need a yarn needle with a large eye to sew in our ends and also a pair of scissors. We will also need some thread to go with our project. The mustard colored one matches my yarn and the black one matches my hat. I'm going to go with the mustard yarn because I think that's going to show up better in the tutorial. But if you want to use the color the same color as your hat, then the stitching on the other side of the inside of the hat will not show through. But I will be using the mustard just for the tutorial. This is for me anyway, so I don't mind if it's showing through. Okay, I actually do mind if it shows through. But for the sake of the tutorial, I will put my feelings aside. This needle is a hand sewing needle. It was just in a pack of different types of needles that you can get when you go to the craft shop. I think that's going to work best. I did try a few and I tried like thicker needles, but I found it wouldn't go through the fabric as easy. We're going to start with a slip knot. You can make this any way that you like. I'm sure there are hundreds of different ways to do that. And we've got it on our hook so we're just going to oops, pull the other one pull down and what we're going to do is make a chain so we've got our hat here and we're going to make a chain to go from this side to this side depending on where you want to do your triangle you may only want to do half your hat so you're going to do from here to there but i want to do the entire front of my hat so i'm going to go from one side to the other so we're going to make a chain that goes all the way across We don't want to work our beginning chain too tight. I haven't used a crochet hook this small in a very long time. This yarn would normally recommend a four millimeter or a G size hook and I'm using a three so that's I think two sizes smaller. Okay so let's check to make sure. So if you were just going to go across and do the triangle then that would be long enough but that's not long enough so I'm just going to move that out of screen just in case the camera tries to focus on that and not my hands I'm not counting my chains I am just working my way across again I'm going to just check I don't think it's long enough. Oh, hang on. It's getting close. I need about five more chains. There are different stitches we can use for this project. You could use single crochet. If you, I couldn't find any yarns of mine, but if you've got yarns that change color, you could use a single crochet or a half double crochet. It's up to you. But I'm got, I love, if you've known my videos for long enough, I love the granny stitch. So that's what I'm going to choose for this project. So you want to go from one side to the other. But with a bit of stretching, that's probably too many. So let's pull out a couple. Pop that back on. A 
Okay, that's good. But I've just remembered. You're going to think I'm crazy. I'm going to put them back in again. I'm going to be using the uh, granny stitch. And I'm not sure where my stitches are going to end. So if I need a few more, if I've got too many, that's okay. I could just undo them at the end. If you're going to do a single crochet, you're going to go into the second chain from the crochet hook and single crochet all the way across. If you're doing a half double crochet, you're going to do the same thing. Half double crochet into the second chain all the way across. And this is just giving you ideas of what you can do. But I'm going to choose the granny stitch. So I am going to skip three chain and then I'm going to crochet into the fourth. So we don't count the one that's on our hook. So it's one, two, three, and then four. So we yarn over and work our double crochet into there. We want to work one more double crochet in the same chain. Sometimes when using the granny stitch, I call this the granny stitch, the three double crochets all together. Using the granny stitch, you can do a chain one in between, but because I want this on my hat and I don't want it to get really loose, I'm not going to do the chain one. I'm going to ignore that and then I'm just going to have them sort of closer together. You could definitely use a half double crochet stitch and make a granny. That would be cool. I wonder if that's going to look better. I don't know. Maybe I need to make another hat. What we're going to do is we're going to skip three stitches and then work three double crochets in the fourth. So we're going to skip three chain, one, two, three, and in the fourth, we're going to work three double crochets. So yarn over, go in, oops, and work your double crochet. If you don't know how to do a double crochet, there are beginner videos on my channel. And to get to that, just click on my username and that will take you to all my videos. So that's three double crochets in the same stitch. And again, we're going to repeat this all the way across. We're going to skip three chains and work three double crochet into the fourth stitch. So one, two, three, and then four. We work our double crochet. And see how I've got my thumb there? That's how I do it normally. I'm not doing that just for the camera. That was, is how I would normally do it. Just makes me remember where it is. Again, we're going to work three double crochet and we're going to skip three chains and do it into the fourth. So one, two, three. The fourth one is just there. And we're going to work three double crochet. Please excuse my nails in this video. I I'm growing out acrylic nails. I did have them and then I got them removed because we went into lockdown and I knew I wouldn't be able to get them done again. So they're just growing out now. You may not be able to tell, but I can see them when I'm looking. Hopefully it doesn't show up. How cute is this? So we're gonna repeat this all the way across but at the same time, I'm going to be measuring where I want it to be on my hat to make sure that I don't go too far. We don't want it too long. We want to stop just where the seam comes down. All hats are different. You could stop it just at the edge of the peak just here. But um, yeah, all hats can be different. So this is what I'm working with with my hat. So work your way across, skipping three chains and then working three double crochets into that fourth chain. Pause the video and I'll see you when we're up to the next step. Coming up to the end of my chain and I just want to check to see where it's going to sit on my hat. So you can see the side seam there. I want it to sit on the inside of that side seam. So I want it to sit here where my fingernail is rather than on this side. So I'm just going to line it up with that as best I can. Sorry about the noise it's making on the table. So you can see there, uh, whee, hold that. You can see there that I'm not quite to the edge. So I'm going to put in one more lot of three double crochets to bring me over to the edge because I want it to line up just here. So lucky I did put them chains back in because we've not got that many left. So one, two, three, and then double crochet, three double crochets in that last one. So 
So I do have an extra chain and I can undo that. Hopefully if I didn't make my um, what do you call it? slip knot too tight. So let's see if I can. I'm going to have to wiggle it a bit. Okay, if you're an 80s kid or a 70s kid, did you just think of that song Wiggle It just a little bit? Because I totally did. Why are you not working? Come on. I think I've done it too tight. But that's okay. I can actually just sew it in. It's only one extra chain. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Ooh. Just pull that out. And then just cinch that up. Go on. No one knew it was there. Apart from us, obviously. What we want to do is look at the shape of our hat. And mine sort of goes up a little bit before it starts to taper at the top. If you're using a single crochet or a half double crochet stitch and you're making it a solid piece, what you're going to do is work, when you need to decrease the sides, you're going to work a single crochet decrease or a half double crochet decrease, depending on which stitch you're using. And you're just gonna work those on either end. So I would do one stitch and then work your decrease and then when you get to the other end, I would leave a stitch at the end and work your decrease sort of two stitches before you get to the end. But today we are just doing the granny stitch. So I'm going to work three stitches. Let me know if you would like me to demonstrate the solid one because I do have, I think I've actually got two other hats like that. One, another one is black and uh, the other one's grey, I think. So we've done our chain three and then into this space here we are going to work three double crochet. Into the next space again three double crochet. We're going to repeat this all the way across Oops, without getting your hook stuck. Working three double crochets into each space. It's only quite short, so that would be like almost half an inch. So it is quite short. If you've chosen to use worsted weight yarn and you'll have a bigger crochet hook than me, then yours will be a bit taller, but it is quite small at the moment. Alright, so work this all the way across and pause the video and I'll meet you when we're ready for the next step. We're up to the end of our row and we are going to work one double crochet in the last stitch. Now on our first row it is the chain three that we skipped. Remember how we skipped three chains and did a double crochet in the fourth? That there is where we skip the, the three chains. So we're just in the top there, we're going to work one double crochet. Poke it in there. I am finished row two, and what I'm going to do is grab my hat and I am going to make sure that it's still looking good. And you won't know this in the tutorial, but I just did like five rows and realized it was complete wrong shape. Mm -hmm. I decreased way too early. So you can see there I can still go up another probably one or two rows before I have to check again because it's going straight up currently. Move that around that side. You can see my seam. My seam is just here. And I can still go straight up before it starts to taper in. And you don't, it doesn't look like we're going to have to do too much decreasing, but we'll see how we go. So if you can still go straight up, then go straight up. Uh, if you need to start doing a decrease, then I will have timestamps going along the bottom of the video. And one of those will show you 
where we start to decrease. So I will show you how to do the next row. We are going to do a chain three and turn. And in this first, I've yarned over already, in this first space here, we're going to work two double crochet. Into the next space here, we're going to work three double crochet. And we're going to work three double crochet in each space across until we get to the end. So at the moment we're just creating a rectangle, creating straight sides at the moment and then when we're ready for our decreases I'll show you what to do. When we get to the end we'll have a space here and we're going to work three double crochet into there. And what I like to do is I like to work the two double crochet and then my third one I like to put it into the top of the chain but you can work it all in that same space. This is just a personal preference for me. That's just how I like to do it. So it's the top of the chain that's on the end there. So that's a repeat for our straight sides. You've got one stitch on the end here and then you'll have three stitches. So see on the bottom here we've got three on the end so it's like a little block. Then we've got one and then we've got three. We want to alternate between the three and the one. So we've got three, one, three. We know the next row has got to be one. So it's a chain three. You can do a standing double crochet here if you like, if that's what you prefer. I, to tell you the truth, I never think to do it. I'm old school. <laughs> so what we're going to do in the next space, which is here, we're going to work three double crochet. all in that same space. If you've worked a granny square and you've made millions like I have then this is going to be an easy project for you. I don't know if you just heard that odd, no that odd noise but that was my computer restarting for some reason. It's gone to sleep because I'm not using it but it's... I don't know, something woke it up. No idea what because I'm sitting right next to it. <laughs> Maybe it's got bored. Okay, so I'm going to work three double crochets all the way across. Pause the video and I'll meet you when we are there. Remember how I said we need to keep the end consistent and we need three and then one stitch and then three? Well then it's the same when we get to the end because, well, it's got to mirror the other end that we just did. So because we've got three and then one and then three, we need one. So to, to get your one stitch on the end of a row, we just do a double crochet into that very last double crochet from the row below. So put your crochet hook in there. I think it's actually a chain three from the row below, but hey, that counts as our double crochet. Okay. So let's try this on our hat again. I'm trying this on every row because I don't know if I edited it out just before but I was going along and decreasing every row and it was completely the wrong shape. Okay so that's good. That looks good. Yes, yes. Excellent. I'm going to do a couple of more rows and then so your, your row repeat is the last two rows where you've got like, see how you've got one stitch there. You know your next row is going to be three stitches. So it's a chain three and then two double crochets in that space. So you've already done that down here. So if you are not sure what to do, then I will have a timestamp here and you can go back to the row repeat. I love this. I love this color. It doesn't come up very nice. It's a beautiful mustard color. In natural light, it's lovely, but in fake light which is what I've got now I've got my studio lights on it can be like a bit like uh, yeah things that come out of babies <laughs> I'm not gonna say what it is on camera all right so pause the video and keep going so you can see how here I need to keep going before it starts to see how it starts to curve just here but here it's just 
it's, it's curving but it's almost straight so I'm going to do two more rows maybe even three to see how it goes and then we'll start showing you how to do the decrease section pause the video and I'll see you there I have completed eight rows on my crochet and as you can see it's still sitting on the sides which is awesome it's exactly what I want it to do but now you can see if I sort of put it that way you can see now it's definitely started to decrease so we're going to start our decrease section now so I will let you know how to do that it's super easy so don't worry when you finish your amount of rows what you will need to do is stop on the row which has the one stitch and then three in that next space uh, you don't want to stop on the one where it has you know your chain and then two double crochets into that very first space so you want to finish when you've got one stitch on the end because that's going to allow us to do our decrease so I've done my chain three and normally if we weren't doing a decrease we would work two stitches in that first space but we're not going to because we want to decrease we want to work in the next space here and then we're going to work our three double crochet and we're going to work our three double crochet all the way along until we get to the other end but just don't work into that last space and I will show you what to do my yarn is stuck come on you behave yourself so yeah continue on until we get to the end but just leave that last space and I'll show you what to do pause the video and I'll see you there I am coming up to the end and I have my last space left so if we were not doing a decrease we would do three double crochets into the end there wouldn't we but we're not going to because we are decreasing so we want to work one stitch into the end of here you can work into that space or you can work into the top of the chain three which is where I prefer to go and I don't know if you can see that but it's slightly starting to curve over so we're going to spin our work around and we're going to chain three again or, or you can do your uh, standing double crochet we're going to skip this first space and work into that one and we're going to work our three double crochet but you already knew that and we're going to work that across all the way and again just pause when we get to the end space and I will show you what to do pause the video and I'll see you there we are coming up to the end and again we want to just work one stitch in the end and I'm going to be working it into the top of the chain three again you can work it just in that space if you like okay so I'm not going to go any further I'm going to check to see if it fits my hat this is getting a lot bigger now you can see here we've got the decreases decreases <laughs> the decreases working our way up and you can see it's starting to decrease here this will stretch over to that line but just be careful don't create decrease too quick otherwise you may uh, not follow the little you may not follow the line of your hat so my next row I'm not going to do a decrease and then see how that works out to swap back to our regular crochet so no decreasing we're going to chain three because I think if I decrease too much on mine it's going to go an odd shape it's going to be way too much decreased so on the next row we're not going to be doing a decrease so I'm going to work in this space for two double crochet and then each space across we're going to work three double crochet so keep going and then when you get to the end just pause and I will catch up with you there so pause the video and I'll see you at the end of the row 
I'm coming up to the end of the row and you can see the space here we are going to work if you're not decreasing you're going to work three stitches into that last space if you are decreasing de oh, what is with that word <laughs> if you are decreasing then just work one stitch Okay, so I'm going to check this on my hat again. It's really hard to, sh to show you both sides, but just believe me, the other side looks exactly the same. <laughs> so you can see it's coming up here and then it's starting to decrease. Now you're going to notice this little weird bit, but once we stitch it across onto our thing, it's going to disappear. It's going to become a straight line. So you can see now that I need to decrease for the top of the hat there. I think it might be a decrease, a case of decrease each row. It could be every second row. We'll see how we go. Our last row had no decreasing. So my next row, I am going to decrease. So chain three. And I'm just going to work into here with three double crochet. So on this row, it doesn't really decrease because this is pretty much what we would have done anyway. But then on my next row, because I'm going to do it as a decrease, well, it's going to decrease. <laughs> so work three double crochet in each space across. I'm actually having fun doing this. I have frogged it so many times, not that you will know because, hey, magic of YouTube. But I've frogged this so many times, which if you don't know what that means, it means pull out all the stitches and start again. To get the right shape it's a it's an odd shape I'm sure this will be much easier if you were just working uh, single crochets or, or half double crochets because you would be able to shape it a lot better that's what I think I have not put this into practice <laughs> but please tell me if you would like me to show you how to do that with just single crochet or half double crochet I personally, I would choose half double crochet. It's got more texture. So we're coming along and we're going to do a decrease. So we're going to do three into the last space. That's just normal. And then one double crochet into that very last stitch. Again, that's just normal. But our next row is going to be a decrease. So it's going to bring it all in together. So turn your work around, chain three. You can chain, th I haven't been consistent with this project, but you can chain three and turn or turn and chain three. It's up to you. I've been mixing it up apparently. <laughs> so for the decrease row, we are not going to crochet into there. So we would normally just do two double crochets in that space. We're going to work across with our decrease. And I have already shown you this in the video tutorial, but I want to show you how I'm making this whole thing for this hat because it's not really like a normal tutorial. In my head, it's not like a normal tutorial. I'm making a shape that's fitting. So I want to show you everything that I'm doing for it to fit this hat. So hopefully that helps you do yours. So I am cr Ooh, I'm stuck. Crocheting long, doing three double crochets in each space. Work your way across and I'll meet you at the end. Pause the video and I'll see you there. Once we get to the end, remember we have got to mirror the other end. So this was one stitch. So we want to make one stitch on this end. So into that space or into the last stitch, whatever you've been choosing to do, just work one double crochet. Again, I'm going to try this on my hat. I do not want to rip any more of these stitches out, so I'm trying on, on, trying it on as I go. So you can see the top of my hat is starting to get very narrow now, so I'm going to decrease every row from here on out. And I will just spin it around so you can see the sides. Whoops, my hat's got a bit squashed. You can see it's a little bit weird on the side. That is totally fine, because when we stitch it onto our hat, it's going to disappear and it's going to look completely straight. It's going to be magic. Trust me, would I let you, would I lead you astray? So now I'm going to decrease, whoops, sorry, just went out of the camera frame there. I'm going to decrease every row until I get to the top. So you know how to do that. If you're not, look at the timestamps, which are 
just do ooh, just down here look at your timestamps and you'll be able to find what section the decrease section was so pause the video and i'll meet you when hopefully we're up the top here this is the shape that i have created you can see here it's gone straight up and then i've done decreases and then straight up and then decrease to the top i have two lots of the granny stitch left and then you've got the one stitch on either end so here it is on my hat obviously it's not sewn on but you can see at the top there that it's at the top we've reached the top of my hat and if i do another row i think it's going to be too much uh, so i'm just going to work with that so now it's time to stitch it on i have taken a strand of yarn and then I've doubled it over and threaded my needle I can't show you that on video because I can't see what I'm doing <laughs> I have to have it right up near my face when, once I put our needle aside I've just realized I haven't finished off my end so we're going to do that now cut our yarn and then finish this off it doesn't have to be too long because we are just sewing in our end for this project and it's not something that we're actually wearing as such or a blanket so we don't have to leave too much of a tail uh, so we're just going to sew in our ends I'm just going to go through the back here Then I'm going to go back the other way. I'm just grabbing those back loops that I can see there from the crochet. Pull that through. Snip that off. If I was going to do this onto something I was going to wear or something that, like a blanket or something, I would sew in a lot more than that. So grabbing our beginning tail and we can sew that in as well. Just going to sew it in down the bottom here course because it's on the bottom of our work <laughs> so just do that there's no set rules on how to sew in your ends so you just do it how you feel comfortable but I just like to go under the loops that are at the back of the crochet like I said I don't need to sew in too much and we have our piece of crochet finished it is the weirdest looking shape isn't it so let's stitch this to our hat. We're just going to lay it down like that, minus a piece of your hair. If you've got long hair, if you've got short hair, does it get everywhere? Mine does. I don't need a dog or a cat. I should enough hair for the butt for enough for the family. So we're going to stitch our hat on. And we're just going to go into the corner of our work. And we're going to go into the corner of our hat and we're going to put our needle through. Now this was a little bit tough to do because the fabric on the hat is uh, reinforced for the front of the hat. So then we are going to turn it over. This will be a lot easier to do obviously when you are... What's happening here? Oh, I don't want to go through that bit. Pull it out slightly. Because if I stitch it underneath that bit then it's going to hide all my stitches warning this part of the tutorial is not going to be the greatest because it's a bit, bit of an awkward ankle oh, you can tell I don't sew I should have started from the back so I'm going to pull it out I'm going to go in the corner and through make sure it's in the right spot no it's not <laughs> told you this bit's going to be horrible Just gotta find the corner of your work. It might be as close as I can get. There's a little bit of a hard section. There we go. There's a little bit of a hard section where where the hat's been made. So can you see my needle sticking out here? And I'm just gonna put my work on top and I'm gonna put it into the corner of the crochet. And I'm gonna pull that through. Goodness me, did I tell you this part of the toil is going to be terrible? Because I forgot to tie a knot. I am not hand sewer, so if you know how to do this a better way, then please go ahead. I am not in any way a hand sewer. I 
I couldn't say I hand sew much actually. With a needle and thread that is. I mean yeah I sew my ends but that doesn't really class me as a hand sewer does it? <laughs> Pull that through. Just make sure that's back up there. And you can work in whichever direction that you want to but I am going to work the front bit first and then I'm going to work up the sides. So I don't really need to show you what to do because well you're just stitching. So where it's coming out from you want to go just next to that. I'd say like a stitch apart and then put your yarn needle. It's not a yarn needle. It's a hand sewing needle. Put that through to the other side. Again you don't want to catch that bit. Just pull it back. There we go. So I wear this hat and I want it quite a bit so it may look a bit used. <laughs> and then pull that through. I have literally got no grip on my fingers. It's been a problem all of my life. All my life. I used to be a, a, a cashier at the supermarket and I could never separate the plastic bags. It used to frustrate me so much. Until I got myself a little sponge with some water on it. Once you've sewn on a little bit, this is going to stay there a lot easier than what it's currently doing. Okay, so we're just going to catch some stitches there. Like I can't open jars because I've got no grip. <laughs> it's very frustrating. I usually use rubber gloves if I'm using making something like this and then the rubber gives you a bit more grip which is what I'm going to do because I cannot get that needle through it's because I cannot lick, look I can't grip anything <laughs> I should have thought about this before I oh hang on I can feel it before I made this tutorial but that wouldn't be wouldn't be as entertaining would it okay so go down to the next stitch and then go through to the other side. Okay, I won't torture you watching me trying to get the needle through because I have absolutely no grip. You're going to stitch all the way across until we get all the way to the other side and that will be stitched down. That is going to reach. I, it, um, it stretches across. I've already tried. It does stretch across to the other side. See? And then we're going to stitch up this side all the way to the top of our hat stitch all the way along to the top of the hat which is here and then down the other side and then your project is going to be amazing a little trick when you're sewing is if you've got a seam see how this yellow thread is coming out of that seam there that's where I want my next stitch so I just need to find where that is And you'll see the yarn needle come out just on the seam. Got it. See how there's the seam here? The other half is mowing the grass. You want it to come out on that seam and then I just grab my stitches and I pull them across. And then I uh, put the yarn needle through the stitches like that. And then when you're going back down through you also want to do the same thing so you want to go through your stitches and let's pull that back find your seam and go through there and that makes it line up much easier and creates this nice edging so as you can see mine's not the neatest inside but i'm pretty happy with that i mean considering i'm not a hand sewer that's not too bad <laughs> All your hand sewers are going, no, that's actually terrible. But I don't mind. 
So if that was obviously a black yarn, you would not see it on the inside of the hat. So before we finish off, we want to go through some loops. And I'm just going over some stitches here. That's probably going to show on the... Oh no, it's not showing on the other side. Good, good, good. Make a knot. So pull that through before we go through and pull it all the way. Find the loops. This thread is much harder to work with when, than yarn. It's so fine. So through the loops, not that you could probably tell. And I've lost my thread again. And then just pull that. That's the beginning knot. See, look, I do not know how to use thread. Ugh, I just broke it. Okay, so I've broke my thread, but I have tied it off a few times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find some glue and I'm just going to pop a dab of glue just on the end there to secure that. I can still tie this one off here, but I've broken off the other one, which is very frustrating. Obviously you can't yank on it like you can with yarn. I apologise if you can hear that noise in the background. My husband's still mowing the grass. And we have a very, very, very big yard. And he's chose to mow the grass that's right outside my studio window. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to finish off this one as well. And I'm finished with that because that just came off again. So I can trim the yarn. It's not yarn, it's thread. So I can trim that off. And like I said, I'm gonna find some glue, maybe super glue. I've got craft glue somewhere, so I might find that like proper craft glue for fabric and stuff. And I'm just gonna put a bit of glue on there and stick that down. This is all gonna be hidden inside the, whatever this bit is here. So you're not gonna see it anyway. I'm gonna to have to search for that craft glue. I'm not sure where it is, but yes, that is that part finished. I found the glue that I was talking about. My dad was recommended this. He works, well, he's a volunteer in the Australian Bushfire Brigade and he was recommended this by one of the fellow people that go there to put his badges on. You know, when they stitch badges onto their sleeves and stuff. Yeah, he was recommended this. Now, this is a... Lingcraft Australia, that is like Michael's if you're in the US or uh, Hobby Lobby or something like that. So it's just bought it at a craft store. But apparently it's really good. And he gave me, as you can see, Dad gave it to me. Uh, he gave it to me because he wanted me to put a patch on one of his hats. And he said, you may as well just keep the rest because I'm never going to use it. So I'm going to use that on my hat. Whoa, that came out pretty quick. <laughs> I'm just going to put some glue on there. Let's just... Okay, let's just squash it all in there with all the threads. Like I said, this is going to be on the inside of my cap, so it's not really going to matter. I'm just spreading it out. I'm not actually squeezing it anymore. All right, so let's pop that back up. So that's where it's supposed to go anyway. Oh, it's come through there. That's okay. And then there's just one here because I ran out of thread, so I had to get another one. So I'm just going to stick that down too. Whoa, that does come out quite quick. All right, so we'll do that and then just fold that back over. And that's where it's supposed to go. What's this piece? I don't know. Let's just jam it back in there. And that's how the hat's supposed to go. So you can't even see. But don't mind that. It's, this is a used hat. I use it all the time. So it's a little bit dirty. But yeah, so we've stuck that back down. Awesome.